you know, we're always talking about our tagline, which says disrupt, lead and inspire. So when we first met, it was about disruption. Hence, we did the big campaign on reclaiming Damas, Damas Reclaim. Second one is that we wanted to lead. Um, and we created a campaign when we launched the Dubai Mall flagship, which is about uh, feeling precious where the message was centered around women, the power of women. We didn't use any product on the visual. It was all about her cased in 24 karat gold. Today, we're launching uh, the Inspire bit, right? So Inspire means that we're looking at a couple of key messages. One of them is the fact that we're celebrating this evening um, the launch of our 25 actually renovated stores in total throughout the GCC. Um, and as a matter of fact, three of them are new. The balance of them is pure investment in renovating, rejuvenating our portfolio. The other very important and very key message for us is continuing that feeling precious, that tone of voice that speaks to women. As we discussed the first time, you know, being the first female CEO for this retail giant is a huge responsibility for me, Anna, huge. And a number of things. One, it's a very big turnaround. It's a whole new vision and direction whilst honoring the heritage of Damas. But at the same time, my responsibility as a female running an organization like this is to speak to other women. And so tonight, we reveal our tone of voice, the message of women empowerment. The campaign that we'll launch is all centered around women. And, you know, with a vision to create a community where like-minded women of all ages come and experience us. So, two key messages. One is that we invest because we believe in who we are, regardless of any factor. And the second thing, because I want to speak to women and I want to tell them to come be part of our world. So we have two very powerful taglines. One is be empowered and the second one is be damas. Typically in a traditional retailing store for jewelry, a lot of the fixtures are quite high, they're very much linear, people are standing opposite, it's this sort of quite an aggressive interaction that you have. And when you do have seating, it's not in an invite, you know, it, it, it's much more mass orientated, let's say. For us, the experience is much more personal and intimate. Like I said, we break up the space with leveling, different levels where you can sit and actually spend time understanding about the product, engaging with our retail teams, um, and then <coughs> making it a, a more comfortable transaction, let's just say. Also, we have a very key feature in our new stores where we have the heritage wall. I'm very proud of the heritage that we have, right? So we've created a space where uh, you can sit, you can dwell, you can story tell. We take you from 1907 to our latest campaign. We talk to you about everything from the artisan, the crafts, our manufacturing. You learn to see so much from a visual storytelling. Uh, so our heritage wall is very important to us. That's a whole new feature. And then, you know, the way that we've designed the bays and the new look and feel is we've given a lot of importance to key moments so whether it is wedding whether it is engagement you're really able to naturally navigate the space and also we, we pay a huge respect to the brand realization as well so you have very clear understanding of this is the dna of this and it's a natural process you know there's too much visual overload stimulation there's too much tech overload, right? So the language that you have to speak to them has to be very, very different. Plus, actually, as a language itself, it's even abbreviated. So I think even when it comes to things like tone of voice, we have to look at how we're going to articulate this, right? Not in full sentences, that's for sure. And obviously, the technologies that we use to communicate, which is coming back to Omni, or as we evolve on our storage concepts and design, when we introduce things like Endless Isle, when we introduce things like, you know, the different apps that we potentially might create. So we're very mindful of the new generation and everything focuses on, on, again, time, attention span, right? And obviously you see the new generation very passionate about environmental issues, you know, global warming. So they're very articulate, you know, social messaging. And so that all comes to experience and some sort of unique t storytelling. And I think we will never move away. Any powerful brand, no matter what they are in the world, whether it's luxury, or mass, they never steer from their DNA and their strategy. 
right? They might dip, but if you stay core to yourself, which means quality, craft, service, experience, if you nail all the above, it speaks to every generation. And it's fascinating for me to think that we assume the younger generation, yes, they're faster, uh, you know, they're smarter, they're sharper, they're looking for something new, which is where we're trying to come in and say, well, we have what you need in the language that you understand it, but we'll never steer away from our core values, right? Which has built a hundred years of powerful DNA. I think imminently for us, India is a key market for a number of reasons. Um, <coughs> Malaysia is another key market that we're looking at. But, you know, when you have such a, a powerful brand, the world's your oyster, really. It's just about time and strategy and making sure you get your ducks in a row because the great thing when you've done luxury and retail and brand for 30 years, you sit back and you watch the mistakes of other groups trying to enter markets. So the good news is I have a whole bunch of information and knowledge of how not to do it, right? So I'm going to take all of that experience, put it down in a one pager and know exactly how I enter a market. So India, Malaysia are very key and you know, the rest of the world is for us to take, right? My leadership style, I guess in one word, is human. Okay, that's it. Um, then everything else comes to it, transformational, et cetera, et cetera, from a business. But ultimately, it's human. That means top of mind are everybody. People are my number one asset. I'm passionate about what I do. I live and breathe the business. I set an example by being part of the business. I look to emotionally engage every individual around me genuinely genuinely and i don't have a compromise to that so i hire people that are like-minded who share the same values who have humility in my office there's a very big statement that basically says the most important people to me are those that are least important to you okay i've lived with that for years because everybody everybody in my organization makes an impact regardless of what their role is